This episode of the Outside Health and Fitness Podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Get exclusive rewards and more by visiting outsidehealthandfitness.com forward slash support. Outside Health and Fitness Podcast, episode 162, Growler Fat Bikes with Wheelo Glenn. It opens up a another season to mountain biking. So now we actually mountain bike all four seasons instead of only three seasons and then snowshoeing. Welcome to the Outside Health and Fitness Podcast. We're getting outside the box, outside our comfort zone, and outside and in shape. If you're bored with the same old fitness routine at the gym and you're ready to try something new, then this is the show for you. We're exploring new and fun ways to get fit on the trail, on the water, on the slopes, and outside. Hi, this is Steve Stearns from Outside Health and Fitness, and thank you for joining me for another episode. If you're new to the show, we like to stay fit and active by having fun outside. We like to ride, slide, run, walk, hike, bike, golf, rolf, swim, and ski. If it's fun outside and it keeps us healthy, we love it. So if you're like us and you like to have fun outside, then you found the right place. Now, I don't know if this happens to you or not, but I always seem to want to keep going. You know, when springtime comes, I want to keep skiing, and when winter hits, I want to keep disc golfing and biking. You know, I love riding in the spring, summer, and fall, but once winter hits, I hang up the bike. Then I started seeing fat bikes everywhere, and they looked really cool, but the price tag for a bike designed only for winter riding is a bit outside my budget. But what if there was one fat bike you could use all year round? That would be a game changer. Wouldn't it be awesome to bike with no end to the season, even when you live in a cold and snowy climate like I do? Well, that's exactly what my guest Wheelo Glynn from Growler Bikes is working on. On today's show, you'll discover exactly what a fat bike is, why they are so cool, and a new company on a mission to design a fat bike for all four seasons. Outside HealthAndFitness.com Now, before we get into my interview with Wheelo, I wanted to let you know what's coming up this week on my new show, Funky Fitness Now. This week, Jessica and I are talking about some really weird drug side effects. You know, that long, fast list they rattle off on the TV drug commercials? Here's a clip. Welcome to Funky Fitness Now. I'm Steve. And I'm Jessica, and we host Funky Fitness Now. You guys, shut up. It's on. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's probably not. Join us each week at FunkyFitnessNow.com. On iTunes, Stitcher, and other top podcast networks. Stay fit and funky. So my guest today is Wheelo Glynn, founder of Growler Bikes. Wheelo has been riding mountain bikes since the 90s. And together with a group of riding buddies, he set out to develop a fat bike capable of four-season trail fun. I had a really great talk with Wheelo, and by the end, I wanted a fat bike even more than I did before we started. Oh, and stay tuned after the interview for 10 things you need to know before biking in the snow. Okay, so let's get right into my interview with Wheelo. So, Wheelo, I'm really excited to have you on the show and talk with you about fat bikes because I don't know anything about them, but they look really cool, and I think I want one. So, <laughs> Well, thank you for having me today. Yeah. So um, can you just give us a little uh, background on you and, and how you became so interested in fat bikes? Uh, well, I've been riding uh, mountain bikes since I was about 18 years old um, back in Florida, which unfortunately we didn't have mountains. So it was really just riding our bikes throughout these uh, four-wheeler and dirt bike trails. Yeah. Um, when I turned 19, I moved to Boston, Massachusetts. When I got to Boston, uh, my brother and I were opening a business and though I didn't know anybody, so the only thing I had to do for entertainment was go mountain biking. And that's where really my love for mountain biking started kicking in. Uh, Massachusetts had some some really killer trails uh, that I used to just ride this old 26 or hardtail on. Yeah. And then uh, I moved back to Florida for a little while. And then I came up here to, to uh, Rochester, New York. By chance, I happened to find out that there's a huge community of bikers, just mountain bikers in general. I met a group of guys that I've been riding now with for just over 10 years, just with these guys alone. They're the ones who actually introduced me into fat biking a couple of years ago. The problem we have in New York is we get lots of snow, kind of what we spoke about earlier. Right. And with, with all the snow being dropped, our option was ride all the way through fall and into the light dustings of snow. And then we'd have to put away our 26ers or 29ers 
and go snowshoeing, which was good exercise, but still <laughs> was not the uh, mountain biking craze that we loved. Right. Not the same thing. Not the same thing. Not even close. So a couple of years ago, uh, one of our buddies picked up a Borealis fat bike. He fell in love with it and he started riding it. We all jumped right on the bandwagon with him. It opens up a another season to mountain biking. So now we actually mountain bike all four seasons instead of only three seasons and then snowshoeing. Where did these fat bikes come from? I mean, I've, I've been hearing about them maybe for the last year or so, and I'm sure they've been around for much longer than that, but they seem to be really gaining momentum. Yeah, so th- just a quick brief history of, of where fat bikes come. It's actually old technology. It was written a lot more in the uh, 70s, 80s, and you kind of saw it fade away uh, a little bit in, in that time frame. So a group of, of riders in, in California and in Colorado are the ones who took basically single speed fat bikes and they put balloon tires, cruiser tires on these. Mm-hmm. And that's how fat bikes actually started. The problem was the technology wasn't there for the bikes at that time. So all the mass production of fat bikes really didn't take off until honestly just recently. And now we're really starting to see probably really from since uh, Shirley came out with their fat bikes is when it really kind of uh, uh, hit, hit a, a mass production and, and hit the masses. What exactly is different about a fat bike than just a normal mountain bike? Uh, so the cool thing about a fat bike is that on a fat bike, and they actually have different styles, but on majority of fat bikes, you start at four inches uh, tires on the front and rear, and then it gets larger. Um, they are now making uh, tires into the five inch wide uh, segment, which a lot of the bike frames that are being produced right now can't even handle yet. <laughs> um, where a traditional mountain bike would run I, 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 on the specialized mountain bike that I run, I run a two two mm-hmm. and a, a two four on the uh, on the rear, and that's it. Yeah. So you can see there's a big difference. It allows the bike to float on top of snow or sand, even mud, or allows you to get over things like roots and rocks that you couldn't do on a 29er. I've heard a lot of people are using them year-round, right? It's not just limited to wintertime riding on a fat bike. Yeah, and so one of the great things, um, what's coming along with the technology, is the bikes are becoming lighter. They're starting to add suspensions to the bikes, which is now allowing us to ride them literally all four seasons. So uh, with that technology... What we can truly happen is you can now have a one bike fits all instead of where my 29er is kind of built for um, the basic seasons of spring, fall and summer. So when someone first gets on one of these uh, fat bikes and they've never been on one before, what's the most surprising thing that you find out about it? Well, especially with the newer bikes that have been developed, what a lot of people believe is that these big tires are going to make you go so slow and bog you down. Mm -hmm. And the reality to it is, is, these big tires, once they start rolling, are very smooth and very fast. And it's very awkward. When you first look over that, that handlebar and you're looking down at that front tire, it just looks odd at this big old massive balloon yeah. sitting in front of you. It really is just a cool ride. And one of the things that, that a lot of fat bikes are really, uh, and almost all of them I talk to really talk about is they love the feel that the bike gives. Mm-hmm. So uh, with, with the 29ers, you have a lot of full suspension. The bike floats in it, and it glides. And it's very smooth over rough terrain. Yeah. On a fat bike, you don't always have that, especially with the earlier generations. They're rigid bikes. So you get a, a good feel for the, uh, the ground. You feel where you're riding. You have to pay attention to what's going on and where you're heading to. It's a very unique and uh, fun experience. It brings you back to the old days of riding your bike as a kid. That's the best way to explain it. That's awesome. Is there a particular type of snow that's best for a fat bike, or can it go through virtually anything? So the best way to ride a fat bike is if you had groomed trails. Mm-hmm. But like what we don't what we don't have here in Rochester is a lot of groomed trails that bikes are allowed to be on. So one of the things that we tend to do is, especially if there's fresh powder, fresh powder is the most fun to ride a fat bike on. The bike allows it to ride through and kind of stays floated on top of it. When the um, snow becomes crunchy, yeah. And, uh, or you've had a couple of days of uh, higher temperatures, lower temperatures, the bike, the, the snow becomes crunchy and it makes the bikes harder to ride through, but it's, it still allows you with a fat bike to get through those trails that you couldn't do on a normal bike. You don't puncture tires or anything like that with the crust? 
Uh, well, no, not at all. And that's the that's the, the best part about them is um, a lot of these fat bikes, especially if you're running in snow, you actually have to switch tires for the most part. So, uh, for instance, on the fat bikes that, that we're, we're developing and testing right now, um, for all the snow riding we've had, we've been using the uh, Bud and Lou, uh, the Shirley Bud and Lou's, because those are developed just for snow in particular. Yeah. So kind of like your car, you're going to have a set of snow tires, and then for the rest of the year, you'll have all terrain. Ah, I see. Okay. Talk a little bit about, so you're you're getting a fat bike company up and running, coming right up here. Can you talk about that? Yeah, absolutely. So our, our company is called Growler Bicycle Company, and we're right now developing a Four Seasons mountain bike. Yeah. Bike that we can take and ride summer, spring, fall, and right back into the winter. And to be able to do that, there's a lot of things that, that we're having to develop. One in particular is we're trying to, we're, we're trying to stay right now with the newest technology that's being developed. So one of the things that a lot of people have been requesting is to have a five inch tire be able to fit in the bikes themselves. So what we've come up with with the Growler um, Bicycle Company, we have developed a frame that will hold a five inch tire and still give you all of your, your gearing options that you would normally have on a bike that has a smaller tire. Some of the other things too is to make it year round, we're also lighting the bike up quite a bit. We added some carbon fiber in the handlebars and the seat posts, and the bikes will come standard just at 30 and a half pounds. Mm-hmm. So those are kind of uh, some, some cool new things that allow us to be able to, to ride the bikes year round. How did you get to the point where you're able to actually design one of these? I mean, is, that, is it just kind of trial and error for you? or? So just as our company's been named after the Growler, um, every uh, Wednesday night I go out with the same group of guys mountain biking. Yeah. And what turned out to be just one of those nights where we had a great ride on our bikes. And I said, man, wouldn't it just be cool to, to create a company where we can have, where we can make our own fat bikes and do what we want. And sure enough, uh, as sitting over a, a couple pitchers of beer and, and drinking away, we started talking about it. Uh, and this was almost two and a half years ago when we first started talking about opening up this business. And uh, the fun part is, is, We've basically taken all the experience that we've had as it, just mountain bike enthusiasts, not pro racers, not, not any of that stuff, just mountain bike enthusiasts said, what does the average guy want in a mountain bike or in a fat bike that can go anywhere and do anything? And that's what we're trying to develop, and that's what we have developed. So basically it's taking a bunch of drunken friends <laughs> and some good mountain biking nights to come up with uh, what we've designed. That's probably the start of a lot of really cool inventions, don't you think? Just a oh. bunch of guys sitting around drinking, <laughs> having a conversation. We have talked about businesses after businesses, but uh, <laughs> once, once we started talking about fat bikes, it was it was it was a sold idea very quickly. <laughs> that is so cool. It's Growler Bike Company, right? Yeah, Growler Bike Company, um, yeah. our bicycle company. It's uh, our first bike launch is uh, hopefully going to be this spring. Okay, and we're not putting a date on it because there's a couple things that we are changing the components of our bikes and and the reason why that is is when we started developing the fat bike that we have the technology changed drastically and very fast um shram actually has a new system called the shram gx um which allows a lot more compatibility with other components that are out there um so that's some of the things that we need to re-bring in another prototype and we got to run that bike until it's dead yeah so now we have our frame and we do have a good selection of components, but we want to up the ante just a little bit with the components that now just change. Now, are you going to be selling these bikes uh, online, or are you selling them just at your shop, or how is that going to work? Uh, so some of the things that we have in the works right now is we're going to be a direct-to-consumer bike company. So they're going to be able to go to our website, mm-hmm. growlerbikes.com, and they'll be able to place an order for the bikes that we, that we have there, which there'll be multiple options for them depending on what price points they want. And uh, what what um, options they want on their bike. Uh, at that point, basically, we're going to grab it out of our warehouse, ship it to them. It should be there to them in five to six days, and that's it. They'll be on their bike ready to ride. That is so cool. That's great. So it's it's growlerbikes.com. That's where we can go and check out what you guys are doing. Do you have anything up there now? Uh, right now, the the website's in development, so you'll see just a basic coming soon page, nothing more than that. Yeah. But very soon, you'll start seeing the products on there. Uh, but once again, we want to make sure that before we start throwing out what we're going to be actually mass producing, we want to make sure that that product's going to be perfect for our consumer. I'll make sure to put a link in the show notes to growlerbikes.com, so if you're interested in 
what uh, Wheelo has got going on over there. You can check it out. And if you can let me know, uh, Wheelo, when you guys do launch and you've got something up there, I'll be sure to uh, let the listeners know that too. Absolutely. I greatly appreciate it too. We're going to have uh, links on our Twitter as well, Growler Bikes. Uh, or Wheel of Glen at Growler Bikes, and uh, you'll see it on our Facebook and all that too. So we'll definitely get that out to you. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. It's, it's really exciting to uh, to talk to you about the uh, the fat bikes, and I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Absolutely, man. Thank you for having me today. Wow, it's hard to believe I'm at episode 162. I think that's close to 80 hours of content with really cool guests, doctors, athletes, and authors, and I want to keep going, but I need your help. Visit OutsideHealthAndFitness.com forward slash support and give what you can. I've set up great rewards for you like access to the entire back catalog of Outside Health and Fitness, free ebooks, advanced episodes, bonus content, and a lot more. Levels start as low as $1 a month. So visit OutsideHealthAndFitness.com forward slash support and become an Outside Health and Fitness fan right now. Go ahead. I'll wait right here. Don't worry. Okay, so I found this really great article over at Single Tracks called 10 Things You Need to Know Before Biking in the Snow. And it's a pretty comprehensive article. They cover everything from how to select a, a uh, fat bike, what to wear, where to ride, emergency stuff that you want to bring with you. But the other thing that's really cool over here is they've got a video called Too Fat and Too Furious, a fat bike free ride film which really demonstrates how much fun these guys are having on these bikes and makes me want to get one so bad. So I'll have a link to that in the show notes as well. So I want to thank Wheelo for coming on the show and sharing his passion for fat bikes with you and I today. If you want to find out more about Wheelo and Growler Bikes, I'll have links in the show notes at outsidehealthandfitness.com forward slash 162. You'll also find a link to the article I referenced earlier, 10 Things You Need to Know Before Biking in the Snow. Next week, I'm excited to welcome Gerald Smith back to the show. You might remember Gerald from episode 156 when he was on sharing amazing information about high-intensity interval training. Well, next week, Gerald is back to talk about some of the many facets involved in healthy, sustained weight loss. If you've been doing all the right things but not seeing the results, you need to check out next week's show. And remember, as a fan, you can get the show before it's released to the public and a shout-out. How cool! Visit OutsideHealthAndFitness.com forward slash support right now and become a fan. I'm Steve Stearns. Thanks for listening. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Outside Health and Fitness Podcast. I hope you got something of value from the show today that helps you get outside and in shape. For more on taking your health and fitness outside, visit OutsideHealthAndFitness.com and subscribe to the show. Until next time, I'll see you outside. Outside.